The following marketing information and discussion is provided for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as professional guidance or consultancy. You should find an agency for that. Comexis is a digital marketing agency, so feel free to hire us. But otherwise, just enjoy the show. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Buyer's Journey by Comexis, a discussion-based podcast on the ever-changing marketing landscape. I'm Matthew McGordy, the social media content producer here at Comexis. I'm Len Ward, the managing partner at Comexis. And I'm Josh Lines, the digital marketing coordinator here at Comexis. So today is day four, the final day of podcasts week on The Buyer's Journey. So this week we've been talking about podcasting, different aspects of it. Yesterday we talked about Spotify and their new analytics platform. The day before we talked about a really interesting Adobe Analytics piece um, that we'll probably mention in today's episode as well because some of the stats there are fantastic. And then on our first day we talked about Google Search adding uh, playable podcasts right into search results and all the effects that's going to have on uh, Google search results, but also conversions for podcasts, getting your podcasts found, etc. cetera. Um, today we are talking about a really great um, digital audio advertising piece from eMarketer. I'm going to link it in, t- in the blog description. It is a very long, like 10 to 15 page uh, report. I pulled a couple excerpts from it. Um, just interesting things that we really haven't covered this week um, on our podcasting week. Um, So we're gonna start off with the three main questions that the report kind of has in their brief. Um, So the first is how many US consumers are listening to various forms of digital audio today? And that is more than three quarters of US internet users will listen to digital audio formats like podcasts and streaming music at least once a month this year, according to eMarketer's April 2019 forecast. And podcast listeners account for a much smaller portion of the US internet population, only 26.9%. But the audience is growing fastest, as we talked about uh, two days ago. We have about 25% of podcast listeners were. I'm trying to think of the verb. Taken in is not the correct verb. 25% of podcast listeners just started listening to podcasts within the last six months. Mm. So that is in a, a huge growth, right? Uh, and 30.8%, this is back to eMarketer, and 30.8% of digital audio listeners will access that content via smart speaker in 2019, something we somewhat touched on in the Google search episode um, in regards to Google search soon allowing you to just search voice search for podcasts right um so the next question what the next question was where are advertisers putting their digital audio ad dollars today so streaming audio specifically am fm radio and pure play music services such as spotify and pandora are the biggest outlets for brand advertisers today podcasts have been the go-to channel for many direct-to-consumer brands and increasingly traditional brands are buying into the power of categorical exclusivity and influence that podcast ads provide And then finally, what about smart speakers? Smart speakers are contributing to the digital audio advertising landscape in two ways. First, as an enabler and an accelerant of digital audio consumption, and second, as a future forward advertising outlet. It's early days for smart speaker advertising, but many brands are eyeing this arena closely. And there's two charts I wanna mention. The first is, uh, by 2020, US adults will spend more time listening to digital audio than radio. Uh, This is between 2016 and 2021 forecast. Uh, So long story short, around 2019, which is where we are now, radio and digital audio are almost exactly the same. Radio is 80.4 and uh, digital audio is 79.6, but they are forecasting that in 2019, digital audio will jump 4% to 83.9 and then overtake uh, terrestrial radio, which is interesting because they have another chart, share time spend with audio among U.S. consumers by platform, Q1 2019, and the highest spent platform was AM and FM radio, 46%, followed by owned music at 12%, music videos on YouTube at 11%, ad-free Sirius XM at 6 ad-supported Pandora at 4 and finally podcasts at 4%. And then that was followed by TV music channels at four and ad-free Spotify at 3%, with ad-supported Spotify also at 3%. Um, So some interesting stats there. Before we move on, do we have any comments that we want to mention on that specific area? On this platform, it says AM, FM radio, 46%. So that's AM, FM radio. That's just terrestrial. So Is that terrestrial listened to via the phone? 
via, or is that still old school? Just turn it on. I mean, I'm, I would assume um, because they, for example, they have on the same chart other streaming audio and other. I'm guessing that that is purely. That's actually a very good question that I don't know if this chart. I'll have to look into that. I'm assuming that is probably mostly CarPlay, but I could see it like playing the radio station like at your office or something like that. Yeah, just because that that's that's interesting. I mean, obviously, if you if you ball up everything else, it's, it overtakes AM FM radio. Yeah, yeah so, of course. So AM for, this chart is kind of you don't understand what you're looking at. Even if you go look at something like, you know, ad free Sirius. And if you go ad-free Pandora, we're well, the same company now, so it's seven percent. Um, it's ten percent. Uh, no, that would be. Oh, ads, you're right. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I got you. I got you. So ad-free. Um, well, yeah, you could even do ad-supported. Ad-supported, like that's. Yeah, so you're getting like almost twenty percent of yeah, the pie. Yeah, I mean, there. they're so you know, serious is so. If I'm looking at it from an advertiser standpoint, I'm like, wait a minute, the play here could be serious radio, you know, which mm. is something to consider uh, regarding marketing once you understand the lay of the land. I still think Spotify is going to completely mm -hmm. get their way in. I would not be surprised to see a Spotify serious merger somewhere down the road. I think that really makes a lot of sense for both of them. But the AMFM radio is, is interesting because a lot of people are grabbing their phone or they're, they're you know, listening to it, you know, on their computer and you're going to, you know, like here, when I listen to Fanatic, I just go to my computer, go to fanatic.com and I just download mm -hmm. and listen. Um, but it's still a push where I think people are doing that. And I actually think that there's a little bit of a hole now where if you do want to reach, say, the Eagle season's coming up and you want to reach the Eagles fans for, you know, whatever you may do, I still think that there is room to play in terrestrial radio and actually advertise there. But what this is showing you is that we're clearly at end of days right now um, on what's going on. So that I just... Just thought that mm -hmm. chart, I get it, but it's a little, I think it should just be explained a little more in their chart as to, okay, we'll understand, maybe ball it up as these are the same companies because they are. Yeah, that's true. I, I, I think um, we also have to keep in mind, um, you know, at the end of the day, a lot of people are listening to, I mean, there are a lot of people listening to podcasts, for example, because of the, the stuff we talked about the other day at work, at work or in their car, but a lot of people are listening to AF, AM, FM radio in their car and the amount of times that like it counts as you listening to radio the 10 minute drive you took to like a wawa or something because you're not going to pull out a podcast or spotify for that necessarily um is something to keep in mind not that not that people aren't getting hit by ads during that time because they are but that's but this why is a, the percentage would be so high yeah and this is terrestrial radio doing their damnedest to spin as to why you should be investing so much money in there come on man it's like you know if you really if you really look at these numbers and understand what's going on it should be a very big red flag before you go sign that fifteen thousand dollar contract with a local radio station i am not saying don't support terrestrial radio i am not paying saying that I don't think local radio is still a viable option, but I think the amount that's being invested in there and the cost sometimes are really high. I know I've heard, you know, we deal with one of our partners here who's, you know, he's great and he said the radio prices are beginning to come down a lot and it's still effective, but when you are going into marketing and you're advertising, if you're spending 50% of your money on terrestrial radio, this that's a problem. Um, and I think this chart kind of supports what's going on. So. Just yeah, absolutely. And, and, and something also to keep in mind is we're comparing AM, FM radio to all online or digital audio channels. So we're talking about one somewhat consolidated mass, I'll say, compared to multiple splinters. Yes. And you also have to keep in mind, like, Spotify ads, not that expensive to run in comparison. And you are hitting less people, but... That like there, that's kind of the 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 not juggling act, but the the balancing act that you have to to do it's to same, figure out what's most effective for your brand. It's the same reason why you would veer clients towards going and using Bing pay per click opposed to Google. You're not going to get the same amount of people, not even remotely close for the search of divorce attorney near me. However, the people that you are going to get, or you're going to be able to do Bing, very cost. It's effectively, it's going to be easy to do. The competition's not there, and it's at least something. So Spotify, to me, is where you can get in there if you don't really have the funds to do terrestrial radio. 
because of Spotify and the demographics they can give you, which is really strong, and plus the way you can track certain things, it's absolutely something that you should be putting your money towards. So Absolutely. One thing I want to point out on this chart is also, and, and they pointed out in the marketer piece with this great quote, uh, I'm going to cut out a, a decent amount of it, but basically between own music and ad-free options on various streaming services, the average adult spends about a quarter of their audio time in ad-free environments. So just something to keep in mind, there are a lot of times where people aren't being able to be hit by your ads. Um, but there's also a lot of times where they are. Um, so then the, ne the next section of this is kind of talking about why, um, why podcasting in particular and digital audio is so good and effective at hitting people and then a bit into the sort of attracting of ad dollars, which we'll then get into um, ad spend, and then we'll talk about Adobe Analytics. Um, so let me just let me just uh, read these quotes. So, quote: If time is the commodity and attention is what a marketer is trying to capture to influence purchase decisions and brand connections, then audio is really a unique way to reach those consumers in those contexts where you can't reach them in any other medium," said Scott Walker, senior vice president of ad strategy at music streaming service Pandora. The Interactive Advertising Bureau, the IAB, and the PwC estimated U.S. audio ad spend totaled. $2.25 billion last year. While this accounted for just 2% of all U.S. digital ad spending forecast by the two firms, spending was up 2.29% from 2017, which was $1.83 billion, and mobile accounted for more than three quarters of all audio ad dollars. The eMarket report continues, many interviewed for this report emphasized the importance of digital audio audiences gaining a critical mass, which is an absolute must for attracting any significant ad dollars. But they also highlighted the uniqueness of digital audio as an attractor, the ability to reach consumers in an active and engaged mindset with an advertising format that requires no visuals and limited competition for share of voice at the moment of impact. Quote, it's a medium that weaves a brand into not only places that you can't reach with screen time, but also increasingly, increasingly audiences that aren't moving away from that are moving away from screen time, said Susanna Gerlimska, head of automation for EMEA at music streaming service Spotify. A February 2019 survey of 500 marketing and advertising business decision makers in the U.S. from Adobe and Advantis found 29% of respondents said having digital audio as part of their cross-channel strategy was important and added 19% and rated it as very important. Just 22% of respondents said they did not do any digital audio advertising. So there's a lot, um, there's a lot in that big two paragraphs that I just read, but I think one of the important things that we can talk about is basically that you're hitting people where you don't need an actual visual at times when they might be more susceptible to your message because they are in their car or they are at work and they're either doing something else visually stimulating and you're their distraction. Um, or you're just hitting them in opportune times where they might not expect to be hit by ads, right? And then there's also the the kind of avenue where you're hitting niche communities, something we kind of talked about on Wednesday's episode, which was a lot of these podcasts ha are very niche topics. So you're hitting people in smaller, tighter communities, probably have better parasocial relationships with these hosts, right? And then you're getting the host to go, oh, hey, have you heard about... Squarespace, have you heard about white Blue Apron? Why, why can't I remember Blue Apron? Have you heard about Blue Apron? Have you heard about Harry's? Have you heard about MeUndies? Have you heard about whatever else, whatever else is being advertised, right? Um, and that increases the effectiveness of your ads because that is an engaged audience, yep. right? Any thoughts? I just kind of... I think you kind of summed it up there. Beautiful. <laughs> I love it when I do my job so well. None of my other co-hosts get to talk. It feels bad. All right. Anyway, so, and then we also had, so U.S. desktop versus mobile audio ad spending 2017 versus 2018. Mobile audio was at 1,369, is this million dollars? Yes, million dollars. Um, and then that, that is in 2017. And then it was up to 1,729 million. Uh, desktop audio was at 462 versus 522. And then in total, that makes for 2018, 2,251 million. Why is that in like, that is such a weird way to. What's that? <laughs> the, the totals are. Like so, 2,000, 
million. Two thousand two hundred fifty one. So two billion dollars. Yeah, that, that, that's 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 what. <laughs> that right. Actually, that was very confusing. Why couldn't for they me? just done like two point two in makes, billion? I guess it makes the the chart read better. Yeah. Because technically. 462 is still a million. Anyway, the point <laughs> is, it's talking about ad spending $2.251 uh, billion in 2018. So there's big boy money um, coming into uh, podcasting, to say the least. Any final thoughts on Podcast Week, my, my uh, fellow co-hosts? Just think it's something you should be looking at. I think you should be advertising on all forms of, uh, of digital audio right now especially podcasting, and I also think that if you are considering podcasting on your own uh, and you are a company, I think it's something you should embrace, as I do believe the podcast, uh, we have reached the age where I believe the podcast has now, as long as you have a con concentrated effort like we have here, is replacing the blog post. Uh, so the next thing that was interesting, did you guys talk about, because I'm sorry I wasn't here for a couple of these days, on vacation, stuck in a cabin in Hershey. Um, but, uh, a reluctant <laughs> vacation, it sounds like. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, but, you know, did you talk about, did we talk about Google indexing the podcast? Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. our, pod, so. our, our first one for this week. So the next thing, like, and I mentioned to Matt yesterday, is that, and I, and I have to look, do more research on it, but it was, I have to just, just my initial, you know, cursory thoughts, just to kind of summarize the podcast week for us, is it'll be interesting to see how Google starts crawling these podcasts wanting to know how many people are actually listening to the podcast and that's how they're going to start ranking it. So it's how long are they listening to it? How long are they engaged to it? Um, they're going to start looking at, you know, if you have links to your direct website in there, how many clicks you're getting there, how long they're staying on your website. So there's a whole ranking algorithm, algorithm that Google's going to be going through at this moment for podcasts. And, which, and for reference, just to mm -hmm. pause really fast, the reason they're going to be able to do that is because Google search results leads to the Google Podcasts uh, app or... Uh, the desktop browser version, and that's how they're pulling everything. So they're going to be using those stats to affect the content rankings. Continue. Yeah. So it's it's not that I, I think that the text word is going to be gone, um, but I think that you're going to start seeing a growing trend of there's going to be a really like we have a small bit of text that's going to support the podcast that's going on. I believe that's a new way people are going to be digesting content, um, especially if you can just say, "Hey Alexa." blah, 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 and it comes back and you're, you're, you're being you know, talked to. Uh, so I, I do think we're finally at the stage in marketing where the overabundance amount of text that we were writing and that we were investing in, again, is still there, but I think that we've hit a point now where I think podcast is now, and video, is clearly going to overtake what was going on there. Because the last stat I'll leave is the greatest stat I heard was, I think it was about a year ago I heard this, we've written more as a, as a human race in the last five years than we have in the history of mankind. It's come to an end. Mm -hmm. It's just too much content, people. Um, and again, it's not creating content, it's what kind of content. So that's all on podcasts. You know, I'm a huge fan of it. I listen to it all the time. So uh, advertise in it, do it, all that. Final thoughts, Josh, for podcast week. Can't wait to continue podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Josh. Speaking of continue podcasting, if you guys, my final thought is that you guys should check us out on Domexus.com, <laughs> YouTube, and anywhere you can get your podcasts. And please follow us on Twitter at Buyers underscore Journey. That's all for today's episode of The Buyer's Journey. Thank you all for listening. Have a good day. Bye.